but we know in America where black women have some of the worst relationships with each other, petty differences. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see the stuff on Facebook all the time, black women just tearing each other down, looking for the worst in each other. Sisterhood is at an all-time low. Whenever you have those types of problems amongst black women, you cannot possibly have a successful polygamous culture. It's impossible because a woman cannot share with the same woman she's trying to outperform, the same woman she's trying to outdo. And I think the lack of black men has done more to tear apart the bonds of sisterhood than any other issue in this society. Black women, just like a black man is hypervigilant that his life can be taken at any second, we know that. We, that's always somewhere in our mind. Even if we're not conscious of it, we're subconsciously aware of it. That's our issue. With black women, one of their biggest pressing issues is that even if they have a man, even if they have a husband, even if they're in a fulfilling relationship, somewhere in the subconscious level, if it's not fully conscious, and most of the time they are fully conscious of it, they are concerned about someone possibly sharing or taking the man away. Now, let's talk about the taking. It's uh, pretty interesting because here's the thing. Men would not be taken from women as much if they were able to share. Now, that's another concept that a lot of people are going to have difficulty dealing with. But here's what happens. A man is in a relationship with a woman. He loves that woman. At the time, she appears to be everything he wants. Then problems begin to arise, or not necessarily problems. There's shortages and something that he might need. I'm not speaking sex either. Maybe he needs a woman who's more business-minded or someone who's a little bit more compassionate or someone who does a better, a better job raising children because we have to be honest, not all women come with the same degree of feminine energy when it comes to raising their children. Women differ on that plane. Right. Some women are more right. loving of their children. Others are not. And as men, we can tell, and as men, that bothers us. When we out there fighting that fight, doing what we can to provide for our children and our families, we want to come home and know that that woman is taking good care of our children when we're not there. Not to say we don't mm-hmm. share in the responsibility because it should be the same way when she's away from home and we're at home with the children. But most of the time, especially in the primary years, the woman, and this is African culture, is normally with the children at least in the first seven years. Okay, so we want somebody who's going to be maternal. But some women are so selfish that they're so caught up in themselves and they put their own needs above those of the children. We as men can see that. So we say, you know what, these children need a better mother than this, okay? And so they might go out to seek one. Now, what happens is when they find a woman who's more of what they wanted than the one they have, they now are faced with a dilemma because either they're going to reject this woman who they feel would make a better mate for them and for their children, or even if there are no children involved, she's a better mate for him. Had he met her sooner than he met his wife, that would have been the wife. But now he got a dilemma. He don't want to leave the woman he with. He loves that woman. This woman may be a better fit, but he still loves her. He's not yet in love with this woman. He just met her, but he knows that it can go there. If we had a polygynous society, less black women would lose their men because he would simply say, I found a co-wife. And you might still be primary, but she's going to be the co-wife. And guess what? There's an additional member in the family. Life goes on. That doesn't mean they live in the same house. Because me personally, I don't really see how two women can live in the same house, but if that's what that polygamous Arrangement. If that plural marriage, if that plural marriage agrees to that, I don't have a problem with it. Now, me personally, I'm probably going to have two wives, but they're not going to be in the same house because I just don't like that arrangement. I think women need their own space. Every queen needs their own queendom. That's just the way I see it. But if people see it otherwise, I don't mind. That's up to the individuals. But if he was able to have them both, he would not have divorced the first wife. Polygyny right. will keep women married because I'm not going to give you up. I made a vow to you. I'm going to continue to take care of you. I'm going to continue to put time in with you. But now you know that there's another wife here. So you're going to share some of that time with her. Is that better than being left by yourself? Because we got to be honest, women who were previously married are not as desirable the second time around. A lot of men want women who were never married before, which is understandable to an extent because whether you're male or female, a lot of people don't take marriage as seriously the second time around when that first marriage was particularly rocky. But then, guess mm-hmm. what? If you got a sister who coming to the table with the right mindset and she was previously married, then it's not a problem. But a previously married sister who is also open to polygamy is more likely to get married than a sister who's never been married, who comes to the table, no children, never been touched, beauty, educated, all that, but isn't open to the idea. 
So I think that polygyny would do the community well because what's happening now, and I know this as a therapist, I know this as a black man, I know this as someone who gets a lot of emails from men and women around the world about relationship issues. A lot of men are walking away from their wives because they don't want to accept the fact that he needs another female in, in his life. And one of the things about polygyny that's so interesting, believe it or not, i found and I've seen the women who are most against it are the ones who are in most need of it. The women who are most against it are the ones who are in most need of it. What, do, what am I talking about? What I'm saying is that the women who are emotionally opposed to polygamy, not intellectually. For example, you may have a sister who does not agree with it on an intellectual level, has difficulty mm-hmm. seeing how it could work, has difficulty seeing the benefit, but she doesn't have an emotional reaction to it. Women who have an emotional reaction to it are women who come from a history of abuse, being taken advantage of, being scarred, seeing their mothers use, seeing their fathers cheat on their on, on, on their mother. In other words, they have negative interactions with men. These women bring that baggage into their current relationships. And guess what? That baggage builds a wall between them and other men. So these women who claim that they're not going to share their man aren't likely to have a man if they don't share because the amount of baggage that they bring to the relationship is going to push them into someone else's arms anyway. So the women who are emotionally opposed to polygamy are the ones who need to embrace it more because they're less likely to have a man all to themselves based on the baggage they bring to the table, which is going to push a lot of good brothers away. Wow, wow. I am, I'm I'm so glad that you said that this is a, this started out as being a matriarchal system because a lot of our, our sisters think that it started out as a patriarchal system and they still think it is today. And as you just pointed out, there are different uh, religious sects that actually have made it a patriarchal system. But, um, there, you know, this is not a patriarchal thing, but if you get with people who have that patriarchal mindset, then, yes, it will become a patriarchal thing to do. And uh, and that was, as I shared on my show before, that was the, the thing that broke me and my ex made up because he thought it from a patriarchal point of view and I was coming from a matriarchal point of view. It wasn't the fact that we didn't believe in polygamy. It's just that we came from different angles of the polygamy. So there's, there's many different ways to practice it, but... Um, I believe as long as we try to bring it as a patriarchal thing, a lot of our sisters will not get it. They will not want it. They will not understand it. Um, but so you, you put that so so well. we got a lot of people hanging on, and so I want you all to just hang on for a little while longer. We will get to you and um, get your questions in here. But I wanted to cover some things before we got there. I heard you mention about an informed consent. Yes. Can you go over uh, what you yes. mean by when you say an informed consent? Informed consent. And this is why matriarchy, uh, excuse me, this is why polygyny has to be matriarchal. That's why the elders, men and women, must be the oversight board, and that's why the matriarch the women themselves determine how it should be structured to best suit their needs. At the end of the day, polygamy or polygyny benefits everyone, but mm-hmm. it particularly benefits the women and the children. That's the purpose of it, okay? And one thing that we got to clear up, too, another myth. Women say the brothers want more than one wife so they can have sex with more than one woman. I don't need to get married to have sex. I can have (laughs) sex with all the women I want whenever I feel like it. I ain't got to get married to have sex. There's not a man exactly. walking this earth, especially in the United States of America, with so few of us who are not dead or in jail or homosexual. We do not have to get married to have sex. We do mm-hmm. not have to do that. So the discussion on polygyny is not about sex. We can do that right, right now, okay, with multiple women. It is about accountability. It is about accountability. It's about women no longer hiding in the dark. It's about women no longer having their self-esteem affected because they're told to keep their mouths shut. Okay, it's about children mm-hmm. being born to men who are already married to other women, not being allowed to say who their fathers are. It's about children who are born out of that wedlock who are not being adequately provided for after the father dies because they're not written into the estate because that second marriage is presumed to not have existed when everyone knows it was. It's about erasing the shame of being one of two. Let's be honest. Most women in this country 
blue, black, or purple, are sharing their husband. That is a fact, mm-hmm. regardless of race. But, of course, we're dealing with ourselves. Black women have a worse gender imbalance than any other group. So black women are really sharing. So we're not asking them to ascribe to something that they don't already participate in. They are already participating in it. If you're listening to this interview, there's a 95% chance you're sharing your man. Some of y'all yes. know you're sharing, and others don't know you're sharing. But you're going to share, okay? Because men love women, and women love men, and marriage is not a cure, okay, for uh, for a man not being attracted to any other woman. That is a myth. You get married, hey, and you're no longer attracted to other women. Most people have affairs on the job. Most Americans, mm-hmm. most Africans living in America are more likely to have an affair with a coworker than anyone else because you actually, in many cases, spend more time with your coworkers than you do with your spouse. Right. And so right. as a result of that, we just got to come to this thing realistically. I've often thrown out there, okay, hypothetically, somewhat sarcastically, but also realistically, what if black women were forced to date in pairs? Think about that for a second. You don't go on a date as an individual woman. You go on a date with your co-wife. If I am interested in you, I'm interested in her. I have to marry, okay, that system. I have to marry those sisters. I have to marry that particular matriarchy right there. What if black women dated together? Not saying we're going to do this, not saying we need to do this, but it needs to be entertained because one thing that it would do is it would foster the sisterhood that is necessary. If you cannot date a man without your co-wife getting to know him as well, you're automatically breeding a healthy polygynous type of a culture because now we have it in our minds that we don't get married alone. We get married in two. So it forces Mm -hmm. black women to work together. It forces them to overcome whatever petty differences that they have. But even if we don't date in twos, the truth of the matter is at some point you will be dating in two. Women have to understand there's nothing you can do that's going to keep a man exclusive. There's only things you can do to make sure that you keep him in your life, loyal to you, okay? Right. You can control that. You don't control when and where and how many other women he chooses to cohabitate with. But with polygyny, you put a control device over that. You say, okay, you're going to have two, or you're going to have three, or you're going to have four, whatever the situation is going to be. Me personally, I can't deal with more than two. I can't do four and five. That's crazy. I can only do two mm-hmm. for me. Others can do more. That's fine. But for me, it's two. And I think that's all most of us need to get started anyway. Okay? So you have two wives. Okay? She automatically knows he's going to get another. So guess what? Informed consent. Informed consent speaks to me telling my wife up front, my first wife, I am taking another. You need to know that up front. If it is not for you, so be it and say it. But let's deal with that for a second. It's not for everybody. We even right. got to be careful with that because what it does is it creates a false alternative that says, if I don't want to share this man I'm married to, I don't have to. That's nonsense because you're going to share him at some point or another. Okay? Mm-hmm. What needs to happen is black men need to be more honest about their polygamous nature. We're not honest, especially married black men. And I understand why they lie, okay, because they be at my lectures yeah, and they'll stand up and say, I'm a married black man, and I never thought of another woman. That's a lie, okay? I know why they do it because they want to respect their queen. She's there. I don't have a problem with the motives. Our problem is with mm-hmm. the effect of that because what you're doing is you're painting a false picture of reality. You've got black women thinking that most black men get married to one woman and never think about other women again. You never lose your desire for attraction. 